Hello and welcome back to our Tech Tips channel. Um, in this little short video, I'm going to give another tip for e-learning and really just any online lesson designing content you put out there. And this tip is focused on simplifying navigation throughout your it's learning and e-learning course and lessons. So the premises for this is just to share some tips and really some awesome easy hacks you can use that are on its learning just to make things a little bit more streamlined for your students. One of the number one things that we've gotten from the e-learning call center over time from parents trying to help their student get through lessons is where do I go to find the lessons? Am I in the right place? Do, where do I click? What do I do? Um, and a part of that is a piece that our parents are using its learning for the first time. But another part of that is maybe that it could have been linked somewhere else, or there just could have been another announcement or reminder there for our students to get to the material. So really just try to put yourself in the position of someone who's never been in your course before and use that as a self check to see, is there another way I can set up my course just so I'm communicating my resources, my goal, my materials in multiple places so that there's less likelihood that someone's going to get lost. Um, it's also helpful for showing our students how to navigate through the course. If we leave many steps in our lesson, so it takes students five or six clicks to get to your materials, that's a lot of possibility for someone to get lost. So by simplifying our course, having only a couple of clicks to get there, we help our students get access to tools and materials that they need, and we help them manage their learning resources and assignments a little bit more effectively. Um, if you think about cognitive load, your brain can only handle so many items in working memory at once. That number has been debated, but usually among scientists, it's been four to seven different items. If you get too many of those items in your memory and you're trying to figure out what to do, you reach cognitive overload and then you can't handle any new information. So for us in e-learning, if we're getting lost and we're just trying to find the lesson, then it's going to be a little bit more difficult for us to re-engage and really focus on the content of the lesson. So if you think about that, anytime someone has to pause in a lesson and try to figure out where they're supposed to go next, that's another burden on their cognitive load and it's another obstacle in the lesson. So we wanna make sure we try to delete those little options there and those pauses so that our students get to our lessons as efficient as possible. So I'm gonna go through a couple of these steps. You don't have to use every single one of these. These are just the different options that are out there based on teachers courses that I've popped into and seen really awesome examples and just some tips. So the first really simple thing that you can do is if you have set up your It's Learning course to where it's the course overview page, so you don't have a page set up as your landing page or your start page, then a really simple, easy thing you can do is to add an announcement to your course. Now, these used to be called bulletins. If you're like, oh, I always had bulletins, it's the same thing. It's Learning changed it. Um, but a bulletin or an announcement is linked right here. It's on that start page that students see as soon as they go to your course. It can be as simple as the example here where it is the goal, you click there, and your resources for the day. If you have several different activities, it can be a folder like what's linked here. So you can click here, take some of the folder of resources, maybe it's that week's lessons and they know, oh, this is where I'm supposed to be this week. So it's really easy for students to follow because they see that as soon as they go into your course, be pretty straightforward for a parent as well. So that's a really simple one. All you have to do is just type it out. You click resource, pulls everything up from your tree, and that's how you can link it there. You can even schedule those in advance. If you're really on top of things and want to get those squared away pretty early on. So the next example here is for anyone who uses a page with the content blocks as your landing page when students go to your course. You have it set up to start there. If you use course dashboards in the past and you like the ability to customize, chances are you probably have your course set up this way. Uh, and the key thing here is that if you are using a page as your course landing page, just make sure that you have that page be the e-learning page. So there's a couple of courses out there that um, I've stumbled in and I've seen where um, it's just resources and online curriculum tools. It doesn't actually have the e-learning lesson linked to it. So a simple thing would just be to add the content block that has the e-learning lesson on it or just to set your start page for your course as a page of e-learning lessons so that, again, it's one less click for a student or a parent to do. So an example of that is that if I'm in in its learning course right now, um, this is a UDL facilitators course, but what she did is she changes it regularly, but she puts the week's content on one page, has that set up as her start page, 
And then at the bottom, she has all of the other examples of pages she's built before. So it's updated to the current one, but it also has a way to go back and see anything else you might have done in the past. So again, just a really helpful resource there. And it's one less click to get students and parents where they need to go. Instead of clicking on resources and trying to navigate through that, just a simple fix. The other example that I'm going to go over is um, if you're someone who uses the planner on its learning quite a bit, a simple thing for you to do would be to make your e-learning plans as the only active ones in your course. If you are not someone who's used the planner very often, it doesn't mean you can't start now. It could be something you can start using and maybe you'll like, but the planner is a way of setting up your course. Here's an example one. And you can rename these columns and add more. It is in the three dot button here, plan settings. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on this because that could be its own separate video, but I changed these here to be goal, standards, resources, and a checklist. It's kind of a reminder to me that, oh, within every lesson, I wanna make sure I have a checklist there for my students on what to do. So you could set up the plan to be your whole weeks of lesson, like this one, e-learning week six. Your goal is there, your standards, and if I've already built resources in my course, I can click add and I can do course and it pulls up all of my resources and I can go through and find those different lessons and add and they'd be right there so that when my plan is active for my students, they see the resources, I can add items to my Google Drive if I wanted to. And what that looks like for students, when I click this button, can do action and activate my plan. What this does on my course overview is it automatically puts it there. So as soon as my students go into my course that week, they see my lessons, they see them all there and the resources they would need to complete that. So if you have not started using the plan, it could be a time to start using that and check it out. It automatically puts it here in your student's face so they can see it. The last organization option for your students is to use the learning path option on its learning. So the play plan or the learning path feature on its learning it basically allows you to take students through a lesson step by step by step. I'll link a more detailed video on what that looks like within this blog post, but it's a way of taking students through a lesson resource by resource. So this specific feature on its learning was added for online learning. So it'd be something that I would leverage if I were you right now, or at least tinker with it. Um, you can make a learning path by making a folder. So right here, this was a folder I'd already made and all I had to do, three dot button, I'm gonna take you back to the beginning here. So if I have my lesson, I have all my steps and things figured out, I've organized in a folder, three dot, make learning path. And there it is. I can rearrange, change things if I want. I can add in steps here that maybe it takes students to a review activity if they get a certain score on the test where it moves them ahead. Uh, and then I make it active. And so this is my student's assignment. And again, I can link that on my overview page or a link on in its learning page if I have my course set up that way, but that's a way of structuring your lessons as well. There are some teachers who set up a learning path for the whole week and they build in breaks throughout, like this is the end of day one, end of day two, end of day three for the week, or they just set it up and that's the whole week so students can kind of go through it at their own pace. So that's an example there. The last tip I'm going to show you is just a really simple one. It's probably the easiest hack of all on its learning, but for e-learning days, a really simple thing you can do to reduce any confusion and lack of clarity on what to do in a lesson is if you have lots of resources in your resource tree, which is probably a possibility because we have so many quarters and days of school under us before we got to this point. If you go through and just deactivate certain items here, all of the things you don't need for e-learning, it just makes things a little bit easier for your students and parents know that those aren't things they're supposed to be doing because they're not active in the course. They can't see them. So it reduces any confusion there. So those are just some simple tips. Other things here, ask a student for their feedback, view it as a student so they can see, include tutorial videos showing students and parents where to go whenever possible, and just get some feedback and try it yourself. If you need any help, let us know. We're here to help. Good luck and thank you for everything you're doing. We know this isn't easy and we appreciate you.